guys, do I have a riveting subject for you. I'm sorry, that was an awful joke, but there's only a few times you get to legitimately say it, including now. This is a BY, currently stationed in the carriage works. Um, normally, it looks a bit like this, but it's currently undergoing a lot of work, including lots of work to the frames, including riveting, which is what this video is about. So let's jump in to see just what riveting entails. I'm Rob from the Carriage Shop. Um, at the moment, we're currently restoring this BY van. Um, it was in use for uh, our carriage care team down at Allsford. has been a workshop for them for a number, number of years. Um, as you can see, it's having a full restoration, top to bottom. The underframe's been needle gunned and cleaned and painted. Lots of welding and repair work, new steel going in hopefully all in time for our steam illuminations event uh, this Christmas uh, to run as a van carrying two massive great generators to power all the lighting. Hello, well, my name's Mark Pedley, I'm chairman of the Uri Loco Society. Normally found crawling all over 499, but today we've been asked to do something a little different. Um, the BY that you all know now is being readied for steam illuminations has had some heavy steelwork replacement. One of our favourite jobs is riveting and we've been asked to do some on this vehicle. What we've actually got to do is rivet some angles along the sides ready to seat the floor on. Uh, and I'll just quickly talk you through the process and then we'll show you how it all works. Tools involved. First of all you rivet, which is a 5 8 button. That will go into that hole there. The rivet is heated up on a resistance heater, brought hot to that, which we'll explain later. The hole drop then goes in with this large gun, which has a dome shape in there to fit the head of the rivet. On the inside, we will have the knocker over. And in this instance, it's with a flat snap because these rivets have to be flat, have to be flush because of the floor. They can't foul it. It's a very, very fast process, but it's clearly something we have to be very conscious on safety about. It's all driven by air, or the guns are driven by compressed air. We've got the air supply over there, Christmas tree as we call it, that has a drain on it and it has the air off button. So we can control it from the working area, not from the wall. Um, we create a safe working zone. So for example, with the camera, that won't be allowed in our field of work. It's too dangerous. Um, and we have screens you can't see at the moment. So that when the guns are working together, there's no danger of a slip causing, causing any injury. Um, safety gear will be gauntlets, face visors, ear defenders. Um, that's for the people on the guns. <coughs> Excuse me. The one on the heater won't need that, but they need the ear defenders. You will also find there'll be a gauntlet holding the end of the gun, because that gets very, very hot. But on the handle end, it's either a very tight fitting glove or it's bare hands. The reason for that is that's the trigger and it's very, very sensitive. So if you tap it, which you could do with a loose gauntlet, you've got a problem, okay? So that's why you'll see bare hands and tight gloves. Um, the only other thing I'll say before I bore everyone senseless, there will be various calls and shouts as we go through the process. Everyone has a meaning, um, might not mean much to other people, but it's what we need to do. The team that's working here today 
has worked together for a long time, they're the cause we understand. So before we talk about the heater very quickly, say I'm Mark, I used to be on the whole rock gun. Barry here okay. is the URI lead engineer. He will be knocking over the heads, so he genuinely has the difficult job. And Roger over there, who is our vice chairman, has two jobs. He'll be heating the rivets and he'll be controlling the air supply because the air will not go on until we're ready. Okay. I think last thing is I'll hand you over to Barry who'll quickly go through the, the heater because I know people are interested in it. Hi there everyone, just to explain the process of rivet heating. Um, this is an electric heater, which is a resistance heater. Uh, we've got a transformer that brings the power down to about 80 volts. And as high ampage, power is passed through the rivet. And as you've seen, the rivet gets hot, very hot. And if you leave it in 20 seconds, uh, it will probably melt. So this is a, quite an old machine. The provenance is it came from Poland in the 1980s and it is probably an American um, Marshall Plan equipment. Very useful piece of kit, a little bit fiddly to get running sometimes, but it delivers really hot rivets without burning them. Um, so that's how we heat them. So there you are guys, a little introduction into riveting. The technology has come on a long way since the early days of kind of shipbuilding in the Titanic era, where you just had to have a lot of muscle and Weetabix. Now we have air tools and precision equipment. Thank you so much to you guys for watching. Thank you to everyone who we chatted to during the episode and we'll see you next time.